Aloha. So this is another in the series of videos that I never got posted. And this one, and you can tell because my hair is like shorter even than it is now. Um, but this is about asking for help and how we really have a mind block against asking for help even when we desperately need it. And I've been there. So without further ado, let's go into the video. Aloha. Um, I'm not sure where I'm going to go with this one, uh, except that I found this article online. Uh, it's a website. The, the original website is from Amina. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. It's A-M-O-E-N-A. -E uh, they make prosthetic devices, and uh, such as the breast prosthetics for mastectomy. And they have like a subgenre website for um, cancer patients, and I think they do other types of ones, but that's where I was looking. Um, and it's what was it called? Um, oh gosh, I didn't get the name of this subsite. Um, it's something like the day I found out. Um, that's what caught my eye. Because <sighs> the, the day you find out, you just don't forget. That's like etched into your brain, you know, how you found out and what you went through. Um, and so I was reading a couple of the stories on there and I, I don't think, you know, it's like no matter your circumstances, it's still however you find out and whatever you're going through, it's bad. It's, but they have this one, you know, it's like an offshoot of that where they do advice and stuff like that. And so this other one caught my eye. It's called Asking is Opportunity's Voice. And I thought that, that sounds good. <laughs> Um, and it says, it takes practice, but you'd be surprised how many people want to help you. Just ask. And asking is hard. You know, and it does outline in here, we're taught as young children that we should share our toys and not be greedy, treat others as you want to be treated, but we're rarely taught that it's okay to ask for help. As adults, we seem to think, you know, asking for help is a symbol of weakness. It's... Um, you know, we learn to do everything for ourselves. And so, you know, asking for help, it's, it's weakness. It's, um, it makes us less strong. It makes us, I don't know what it, but it's just something that we're taught. We, and I don't know that, you know, it's not like you don't ask for help. It's just something that the way society is, it's one of those things that we get into our mindset that you don't ask for help. It's, but another offset of that is that we tend to refuse it when it's offered. And uh, even if we desperately need it, we'll tend to, you know, oh, that's okay, I'm fine. And I myself have gotten to the point where, yeah, I, I need help. I'm, you know, I got to a breaking point financially where I had to go on GoFundMe and try and find some help. I'm still, yeah, the, the check to my, um, to Tucker's vet bounced for his surgery and they don't want to take payments. They want the whole thing up front once. And so I'm kind of screwed on that right now. I screwed myself, basically. I probably should just not have had the surgery done, but it's Tucker. Okay, we're gonna try this again. The alarm went off in the middle of it again. I should know to check the alarm and reset it before I start recording. Um, but 
as I was saying, you know, it's Tucker. I, I should have, I should have found another way, but it's Tucker, um, you know, and, and he is doing better, but I don't know, you know, we're probably not going to be able to keep up the laser treatments, uh, especially since we owe the vet money now, you know, so I, I don't know what we're going to do on that. Um, if anybody has ideas, put them down below. Um, but so I thought this was this kind of came at a good time. Um, but it's more than it's more than money. It, it's more than financial. Um, and this actually would have been really good to read before the surgery, before chemo, before anything else. Um, some of the things, even if this is the first time you've ever asked for help, it will save you time and energy to reach out to family and friends. Most already want to help, but may not know what they can do. And um, and that's another thing too, it's like people always say, you know, whatever you need, let me know. But if you don't let them know, they don't know what they can do. And so it's kind of this weird, you know, and, um, it also allowing them to help also allows them to feel like they're doing good that you know it it makes them feel good about helping you you know it gives them a, a boost it's it's a very hard thing to deal with um, there are a lot of intricacies in helping and asking for help um, oh, here it is. Think of it as giving someone an opportunity to do something for someone else. Um, so, let's see. I read this, but now I'm having to read it again to find what I want to say. I feel so unorganized these days. Um, so there's a list, actually. Um, Things that, you know, physical support, things, practical things that people can do for you just to help out. House cleaning, laundry, cooking meals. Maybe they bring you something that you can keep in the fridge or the freezer and then microwave when you're up to eating. Um, grocery shopping, maybe your neighbor is going to the store and you can just ask them to pick up a couple of things for you while they're there. Uh, babysitting if you have kids that need taken care of or is my camera going down oh, geez um, I forgot my tripod today I had it sitting on the counter with my purse and I don't know what happened to it when I got to work it wasn't here <laughs> so I'm just sort of got the phone propped up and I'm hoping it holds um, babysitting and taking care of pets so that's you know I mean, my, my Tucker is my babysitting. Um, transportation to doctor's appointments and treatments, and that was a big one for me um, because when I had to have the surgery, I did not have a way to get there and get home. They would not let you take a cab or the bus or an Uber, nothing. You had to have a family or friend drive you, and I have no one here. There was nobody close enough that I could I wasn't telling anybody that I had cancer. I only told two people. And I, I was so uncomfortable about the whole thing. And um, I actually, it, it's really a long story, but one of them I kind of lost contact with. And the other one was out of town. And I, I could not get a ride set up. I had to cancel my surgery. And then the doctor got mad at me, or the, the the girl that schedules his appointments got mad at me. And then I almost canceled the whole thing altogether because I did not like her attitude. And yes, my phone is slipping. I can see it going down. Um, and so then I ended up having to fly my daughter and grandson out here just to have a ride to the hospital and back. You know, so we're talking like a thousand dollars just for a 
10 mile, less than, uh, you know, like a, a five mile ride to the hospital. So very expensive trip to the hospital for me. And then I found out later, much, much later, that the Cancer Society could have arranged a ride for me, which, you know, if that doctor's assistant, I'm not sure what her title is, if she had had any sense about her, if she knew anything, she could have let me know that because I told her what the problem was. And she did, and I still get very upset about it. <sighs> okay. Rides. Yard work. Some people live in homeowners association neighborhoods where you cannot let your yard, you know, get to a certain point. You have to rake up leaves, shovel snow off of walks, mow the lawn. Um, you know, ask a neighbor, ask a neighbor's kids, you know, co-workers' kids, something. Um, you know, maybe throw them a few bucks. <laughs> um, if they're kids. Um, research medical treatments, clinical trials, and counseling for you. I have done that on my own. It's tedious. It's hard. Especially when you don't feel good, when you have a hard time concentrating and you're trying to research all of this stuff. I've been, now I'm doing it on the lymphedema. <sighs> it's exhausting. If somebody could do that for me and then give me, you know, like a list of things, it would be so much easier. Um, help compile questions for doctors and their nurses. Just tell your friends, you know, if you think of things that I should be asking that I'm not thinking of, write them down, let me know. Um, then there's, those are physical things and you might have some other things that they might be able to help you with. Um, but then there's emotional support. Um, and this is more for anyone who's watching this who knows somebody who's going through cancer or something else. Send a card. Um, offer to be there for their treatment. Um, you know, it, you can't sit in the room with them while they're going through chemo, but you can drive them. You can sit with them the weekend after, you know, a couple of days after when they're sick. Just be in the house with them so that they know somebody is there if something happens. Compliment them. That's a big one. Um, you know, and sometimes compliments are hard to take. Um, I know they are for me. But I don't think I got complimented enough as a kid or something that, you know, I get embarrassed by them. But um, that's always, you know, you know, you're, you're looking good today. You know, your, your cheeks are nice and flush today. I mean, just silly stuff, you know. Your hair is growing out so curly. <laughs> I don't know. I'm getting that one a lot. Um, provide emotional space. If you sense somebody's a little tense, just back off a little. Um, it went off again. I it hit the snooze last time. I didn't get it turned off all the way. Um, it, sometimes the iPhone just drives me nuts. Provide emotional space. Um, you know, just kind of give them room. I, I think that goes back to, oh no, I already did emotional space, no wonder. Um, practice good listening skills, let them vent without saying, well, you should do this and you should do that. Just listen to them. Um, find a breast cancer support group that they can go to or even go to online. Like me, I'm not much of a joiner. I don't get out to groups much. I, I, I just don't do that whole group thing. I don't know. Um, but, you know, I have a couple online that I go into every once in a while. And so, um, you know, that might be something you could find for somebody. Um, distract them by entertaining them. Have them over to dinner, go to, you know, just take them to a movie, invite them over to watch something on Netflix, you know, arrange a night or not a night, but like, you know, a couple of hours 
um, invite them to a barbecue, just, you know, do something that will distract them for a few hours. Not anything that's too, um, I can't think of the word, um, too draining, too emotionally or physically draining, but, you know, something to just, like, take them out of their mind for a little bit recommend a good book um, if especially if they're a reader like I am I'm always looking for a good book anyway so um, get together for no reason at all goes back to that barbecue you know <laughs> um, and then it says once you have the courage to ask for help it's important to take time for yourself and so yeah um, I probably have too much time for myself <laughs> but um, yeah, it, it says having a good support system allows you to have the time to heal physically and emotionally and reflect spiritually. Uh, um, but it is hard to ask for help, but when you do, people are usually, you know, the people close to you are usually willing to pitch in and help. So um, that's, that's it. Um, you know, don't be afraid to speak out and, and ask for what you need. I wish that I had found the Cancer Society, that I had done more research, or that I had, um, you know, I thought I had done research on looking for a ride to the hospital, but apparently somehow I missed them. I. I wish somebody had said something. I wish there was somebody somewhere that knew and said um, that they could help me. It, you know, I would have, rather than flying my daughter out last minute, paying twice as much for, pair, for plane tickets, we could have arranged it so that she came later, maybe when I was starting my chemo. Um, you know, prices would have been cheaper and she would have been there when I really needed her rather than when I, you know, I mean, it was a good visit. I, I emotionally, I really needed it, but you know, and it was a fun visit. I was really only down that one day that I had the surgery and the rest of the time we just played, but you know, it would have been good to have her here for the chemo too. Um, so, you know, I don't know. But, you know, the, the overall message here is don't be afraid to ask for help. Um, asking is opportunity's voice. <laughs> so you're, you're not only giving the opportunity to yourself to get help, you're giving the opportunity to somebody else to help you so they can feel good about themselves for helping you. So if you have any comments or if there's something else that you'd like me to talk about, comment down below. And as always, like the video. And if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button and the little notification bell. And I will see you later. Bye-bye.